Say something, guys. Something. Say hello. Hi, hi. These are the people who sacrificed their lives for this video. See? Anastasia and Lewis. Thank you. Uh, we're going to be learning how to test the strength of the shoulder flexors. First thing I'd like you to do is to move the person's extremity to the full range. This will allow you to know how far the extremity can move, and you can make your decisions from there. I'd like you to place your hand up in the shoulder region to prevent any undesired motions, but please don't restrict the motion of the scapula. And I'd like you to take two fingers, either palpate the anterior deltoid or the clavicular portion of the pec major. Once that occurs, you ask the person to move as far as they possibly can. If you see no movement or you feel no contraction, the grade that you award is a zero. If you feel contraction and see no movement, the grade that you would award is a one. If the individual is able to move to a partial range but less than full in this gravity eliminated plane, the grade that you would award is a two minus. If they're able to go through a full range and that represents their best effort, that would be a grade of two. If the person can move through the full range with minimal resistance, which has been defined as the weight of two fingers, and that is their best effort, the grade that you would award is a two plus. The next group we're going to be doing is shoulder extensors. I'm standing in front of Lewis. I always try to stand outside the plane of movement. I'm going to move passively his shoulder into extension to know how much is available. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to stabilize. I'm going to stabilize his torso to prevent undesired movements, not restricting the movement of the scapula. I'm going to palpate either the posterior deltoid or the latissimus dorsi. I prefer the posterior deltoid. And I'm going to ask Lewis to give us his best movement. If we see no movement or we feel no contraction, we award the grade of zero. If we feel a contraction and we see no movement, we award the grade of one. But if Lewis is able to move partially in the gravity eliminated plane, we award the grade of two minus. If his best effort allows him to go through full range, then we award the grade of two. If Lewis is able to go through the full range, please do Lewis, uh, with two fingers of resistance, and that is his best effort, we award the grade of two plus. It needs to be in the uh, prone position to test against gravity. Let's see how far passively the shoulder could be extended. Okay, from this we're allowed to make our decisions. Okay, Lewis, move please less than halfway. Good. Movement less than halfway in a gravity uh, plane would be a grade of 2 plus. Okay, please move more than half but less than full, Lewis. If his at best effort is greater than 50% but less than 100, the grade that we would award is a 3 minus. Okay, please go through full. If the best effort of the patient is full against gravity, the grade that we would award is a 3. Now, I will put two fingers of resistance. Lewis, come all the way up. If the best effort with this minimal resistance occurs, we'd award the grade of fair plus. Okay, Lewis, go all the way up. If he, patient can take moderate resistance, the grade that we would award is a four. And if the best effort is maximal resistance, come all the way up, the grade that we would award is a five. Good, uh, we're gonna be testing the shoulder external rotators. Uh, I like the shoulder to be adducted, the elbow to be placed at 90 degrees in a form in mid position. And please support, but do not move the underside of the arm. You're going to take your uh, other hand and you're going to stabilize and palpate at the same time the posterior deltoid. You're going to ask the individual to try to externally rotate. So let's see how far Lewis can go. This is his available range. If we see no movement, we feel no contraction, the grade that we award is a zero. If we feel a contraction and we see no movement, the grade that we award is a one. If Lewis is able to move partially in a gradually uh, gravity eliminated plane, the grade that we award is a two minus. If he's able to move through the full range and that represents his best effort, the grade that we award is a two. If Lewis is able to move through the full range against the resistance of two fingers, the grade that we award is a two plus. Good. Uh, now we're going to test those same groups against gravity. If I ask Lewis to give his best effort and he's able to move less than half of the available range, the grade that we would award is a 2 plus. If the patient's able to move greater than 50 percent but less than 100 and that represents their best effort, the grade that we would award is a 3 minus. If the person is able to move through a full range against gravity, the grade would be a 3. 
go all the way up. If their best effort is a minimal amount of resistance, the way the two fingers degrade would be a three plus. Go all the way up, please. If their best effort was moderate resistance, the grade we would award is a four. And if they're able to go through full resistance, the grade that we would award would be a five. That's the shoulder abductors. I like you to stabilize around the scapula. But again, once again, don't restrict the scapula. Passively move the extremity. This will allow you to know how far it can go. And I like it to palpate the uh, middle deltoid. We're going to ask the patient to try to move as far as they can. If we see no movement, we feel no contraction, the grade that we award is zero. If we see no movement, but we feel a contraction, the grade we award is a one. If there is some visible movement, and that visible movement is less than full available range in the gravity eliminated plane, the grade that we award is a two minus. If the person's best effort allows them to move through a full grain range, the grade that we would award, <laughs> award is a two. If their best effort is full range with minimal resistance, which we define as two fingers, the grade that we would award is two plus. Good, we next place the patient in the gravity plane. And we ask them to do their best effort. If their best effort is less than 50% of the available range, the grade that we would award is a two plus. If their best effort is greater than 50% but less than full, the grade we award is a three minus. If they're able to go through a full range, and that represents their best effort, the grade we reward is a three. If the best effort is full range with the minimal resistance of two fingers, that would be a three plus. If they're able to go through a full range with moderate resistance, that would be a four. And if the patient can go through a full range with maximal resistance, we would award, award the grade of a five. Uh, we're going to be testing knee extensors in the gravity minimized or reduced plane. Uh, the individual should lie sideline in a comfortable position. You should be supporting the leg that's not being tested, and the knee should be placed in 90 degrees of flexion. You should be palpating over the quadriceps, and you're going to ask the individual to try to extend their knee. If you see no movement or you feel no contraction, the grade that is awarded is zero. If the person is able to form a contraction but not move it, the grade that it's awarded is a one. If you see some movement that's initiated, less than full, the grade would be a two minus. And if their best effort brings them to full knee extension, but they can only move the weight of the extremity and no other resistance, then the grade would be a two. If the person can fully extend their knee with the weight of the extremity and the addition of two fingers, and that's their best effort, then the grade should be a two plus. Uh, we're gonna be testing knee flexures against gravity. A person should be in a prone position, made comfortable, the hips and knees should be fully extended, and you will need to stabilize the posterior part of the femur. Let's see how much flexion is available. Okay, good. But knowing that, we can make some good judgment calls. So now we're gonna ask an individual to move the best they can against gravity. If they're able to move less than 50%, the grade that's awarded is a two plus. If they're able to move more than 50% but less than full, the grade would be a three minus. If their best effort brings them through a full range and the best resistance they can offer is only the weight of the lower extremity, then that would be a three. If they can fully flex with two fingers of resistance, good, and that's their best effort, the grade that should be awarded is a three plus. If they can fully flex up to moderate resistance and nothing greater, then the grade should be a four. If they can fully flex against maximal resistance, the grade awarded is a five. We're gonna be testing the external rotators in the gravity plane. Person should be sitting comfortably over a treatment table, plinth, or mat. Uh, their back should be erect, and we should have the low extremity perpendicular to the ground. Let's see how far it's possible to be moved. Okay, good. Now we're gonna ask the person to move as far as they can and give their best effort. If there is some movement, but it's less than 50% of what is available to them, the grade that should be earned is a two plus. If the person is able to move more than 50%, but less than full, the grade earned would be a three minus. If they're able to go fully through a full uh, range against gravity, but they can only deal with the weight of their extremity and nothing else, the grade should be a three. If the person is able to go fully with minimal resistance, best effort, 
A3 plus. If they can go fully with moderate resistance, best effort, A4. And if they can go fully with maximal resistance, the grade would be A5. Now we're going to be testing dorsiflexes against gravity. Uh, the individual should sit at the end of a treatment table or a plinth. Their hips and knees should be at 90 degrees. The back should be erect. Let's see how far we can dorsiflex. Okay, very good. So we start in a completely plantar flex position. We ask the person to do their best effort in dorsiflex. If the movement is less than 50% of what is available, the grade that's earned is a 2+. plus. If we go more than 50%, but less than full, the grade that is earned is a 3-. minus. If the person can fully dorsiflex, and their best effort is only the weight of the foot and no other resistance, the grade earned is a 3. If he can fully dorsiflex against minimal resistance, and that is his best effort, the grade is a 3+. plus. If he can dorsiflex against moderate resistance, and that's his best effort, the grade is a 4. And if he can dorsiflex against maximal resistance, his grade is a 5.